it's another picture perfect day in San Diego, California, and the Pirates sailing along on this West Coast road trip, winning two in a row over the Padres. Today, they'll go for a three game sweep here at Petco Park. Hi again, everyone, along with John Weiner. I'm Tim Neverett. Robbie Smikowski will be with us in just a little bit. The Bucks hope to break out the brooms today, and they'll try to do it behind left-hander Francisco Liriano, who picked up his first win of the season on this West Coast swing against the Dodgers on Friday. Might have been his best performance of the year. No question. Uh, he had the good changeup, the good slider going. By far the best stuff of the year, and the Dodgers hitters couldn't do anything about it. They had to know the off-speed stuff was coming, and they just still couldn't lay off it. The changeup was fading away. The slider uh, boring down on the back foot of those right-handed hitters and Frankie uh, picking up his very first win finally hopefully number two today. Keep an eye on his change up and slider today. The other half of the pitching matchup for the San Diego Padres is right-hander Ian Kennedy. When he was with the Diamondbacks he was tough on the Pirates but since he's been a Padre the Pirates have been more tough on him. Yeah, for a while there he was the best righty in, in the National League or at least one of the best and uh, struggled last year both in Arizona and when he got traded over to the Padres. Uh, pitching better of late. Good start his last time out against the White Sox, not good against the Pirates. His last four starts, you see the numbers there, we're hitting 311 against them, an ERA at six and a half. So hopefully that trend will continue and we'll get that sweep by hitting Kennedy well. Ian Kennedy for the Padres today, Francisco Liriano for the Pirates. The Bucks six and three on the road trip and out west hooking three out of four from the Dodgers and going for a three game sweep today trying to keep up their West Coast winning more to come from Petco Park in a moment. Time vessels you can see not too far from downtown San Diego, a submarine 
is the Scorpion. As we head over to Petco Park, Pirates and the Padres. Since May 1st, numbers have been pretty good for the Buckos, right? Yeah, look at that. Uh, you know, this road trip certainly turning things around. But you look at the, uh, you know, the offense has picked up. Is two and a, a game, two and a half games, just a game and a half behind the Cardinals. And uh, probably too early to talk about wild card standings, but the Pirates, you know, really just a couple of games back from uh, being in the wild card lead. So, yeah, nice little run. Well, the regular standings in the Central Division look like this right now. The Brewers, five games on top of the Cardinals, and the Pirates and Reds tied for third, six and a half back. The Cubs in the basement of the Central right now, 12 off the pace. Send you back to Pittsburgh in our Root Sports studios. Paul Alexander is standing by with this game break. Pirates Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC Bank. Know where you stand with PNC Total Insight. Let's go, Fox! And welcome back to Petco Park in San Diego. Looking in from over the grassy hill on the beach. Now the Pirate dugout on the third base side. Padres have taking the field and the Pirates getting set to come to the plate on this gorgeous day. Let's take a look at the Toyota starting lineup for the Pirates. Josh Harrison will lead off. He'll play second base today. Travis Snyder in right. Andrew McCutcheon batting third and center. Ike Davis cleans up. Jose Tabata is in left. Pedro Alvarez in third. Jordy Mercer eight for 13 over his last three games. Two extra base hits. He scored five times. Chris Stewart during the catching. And left-hander Francisco Liriano will bat ninth against Padre right-hander Ian Kennedy. Yeah, Ian Kennedy, the veteran. See the numbers, the ERA 342. Worse here at home for whatever reason. Doesn't make much sense. He's keeping the ball in the park a little better this year than last year, which makes sense being that he pitched half the year in Arizona. But guy throws a lot of fastballs. Um, some 60 percent. A little sneaky quick. Has some movement to it. Um, and see if this hot hitting will continue and we can get the Ian Kennedy early. Defensively for San Diego today. A different look for them today. Carlos Quentin in left, Cameron Maven in center, Kristen Orpheus starts in right field, Headley at third, Cabrera at short. That's the same, but on the right side is different. Chase Peterson just called up from AAA today. Tom Medica plays first, and Renee Rivera catching again. As 
Yes, Ian Kennedy is set to pitch. Andrew McCutcheon. Right now the anniversary of his call up to the big leagues. 2009, this date. And it was also a day game. First pitch. And that is low to Harrison for ball one. We're underway. Final game of this road trip. Pirates 2 0 against the Padres this year. For whatever reason, Rod, the last few years, Padres seem to have had the Pirates' number both here and at PNC Park. But the Bucks looking to reverse that trend this year. Boy, who could forget that series a couple of years ago where the Pirates were flirting with first place and thought the Padres were coming into town and we were just going to knock them off. They came into PNC and swept the Pirates, which led. To a tailspin. Bud Black, the skipper, San Diego native. And Harrison right at the second baseman, Jace Peterson. And there's one out. For every run the Pirates scored during this three game series, fans will receive $1 off the purchase price of outfield box and lower outfield box seats for the series against the Cubs coming up at PNC Park next Monday through Thursday. 14 runs have been scored already, so $14 already off. Tickets will be available for purchase 30 minutes after today's game at pirates.com slash how many runs or beginning tomorrow at the PNC Park box office. So outfield box tickets are now $16. The lower outfield box seats are $21 and falling depending on how many runs the Pirates get here today. Day games here, the ball carries a little better. See a little more offense, hopefully. Well, one pitch. Travis Snyder swinging a miss. And Neil Walker, the day off today. He has started each game this season, 58 straight. And Clint Hurdle said he's tired. He needs a break, and they're very cognizant of the fact that sometimes guys just need a day. I felt this would be a good day with a day off tomorrow as Snyder goes down swinging. Uh, two down now for the Pirates. Let's take a look at the Rivers Casino tips to win. Well, you mentioned it, the uh, Andrew McCutcheon's anniversary, five years, and he's had some success against Kennedy. Five for 12, that's 417 batting average. Corner contributions. I don't know if, you know, if we've seen Tobin and Snyder in the lineup at the same time. Those two are four for eight against Kennedy. and. Chase the change. Uh, Lariano had the good change up working his last time out in LA, and hopefully he'll have it dancing this afternoon and have these Padres chasing. Lariano getting ready for his turn. McCutcheon hopes it doesn't come too soon. Andrew down on the count, 0 and 1. Two outs, bases empty, top of the first. Three hundred average for Kutch. Three hundred right on the nose. Five homers and twenty-five runs batted in. What a home run Sunday in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. One-one. All right, it's one and two. Kennedy is the leader in strikeouts among Padre pitchers with eighty-two. And he will strike out his share. He's walked only nineteen. He's got that good fastball back where it has that late life and the, you know, the velocity doesn't really. You know, it's about 94 is about as high as he's going to go, but you know he's he's in the low 90s, but it explodes out of his hand. Sneaky quick. Kennedy, first round pick in 2006 by the Yankees out of USC. One two. Strikes out. Pirates gone quietly in the first. One, two, three for Kennedy. Padres coming up against Francisco Liriano.
Trouble the first inning, and the Pine Braves will come up. But Black built the lineup up like this. It's brought to you by Honda. Kristen Orphia will lead off in the switch hitting shortstop Everett Cabrera. Kristen Orphia has a 333 average against Pittsburgh. Quentin in the third spot, Headley cleanup. Tommy Medica first base, batting fifth. Cameron Maven. Then Rene Rivera seventh. Chase Peterson eighth. And Ian Kennedy bats ninth for San Diego against lefty Francisco Liriano. Digging in now is the right handed hitter, Denorfia. Mariano winds on his first pitch of the ball game. In for a strike. And for Frankie trying to have back to back uh, good starts. Goose eggs. Last time out against LA, cut up almost a half a run off of that ERA. Hitting 258 against him, seven balls have left the yard. Side to Denorfia. Mentioned uh, you know, the good changeup, uh, also the good slider going against the Dodgers. These Padres do not hit off speed pitches well. Last in the major leagues with a 173 against off speed pitching. Well, Liriano missed with that one, it's now three and one. Well, they've got the lowest batting average overall yeah. in the National League at 223. They've been struggling with the bats. And strike call to count full three and two. The Marfia 0 for 3 in the series. Phil Plantier, the hitting coach. Phil was a pretty good hitter. He hit uh, some pop in the bat. He was one of those guys. He had a kind of a crouched stance, and he was like a spring that would uncoil. Yeah, kind of feet close together, almost like he was sitting down, and then uh, would just come up and out. One year, an A ball, I and mean, he almost won a triple crown. Um, hit 327 home runs, I think, 115 RBIs, and A ball. And about five, I think uh, the leading hitter that year was um, a kid named Luis Mercedes at 305 or 306. Lead off walk issued by Liriano. And the only reason I bring that up is because I thought it was kind of weak. Was, it was, I was in the same league that year, and, and Mercedes sat the last week of the season on that average at 306. And I'm thinking this guy has a chance for a triple crowd. I know it's just a ball, but still, he sat on that average. Doesn't matter what league you're in, does it? I mean, you, uh, you yeah. still want to. It's a big deal. Do something like that, so you did it. Not a lot of guys get a chance to do it, whether it's a ball or not. So a runner aboard, Everett Cabrera, switch hitter, batting right-handed. He can handle the bat. And a strike delivered to Cabrera, 245 hitter. Three home runs and 11 knocked in. Last night, 0 for 3 with a walk. There's one hit in the series, and that came Monday night in the fifth inning. It was a run scoring double. One ball, one strike now to Everett Cabrera. Calling the balls and strikes, the crew chief, Joe West. Rob Drake is at first. Seth Buckminster is the umpire at second base, and Alan Porter at third. Thank you, ready to go, and the throw to first. Coming back is Denorfia. Denorfia has six stolen bases. He hasn't been caught yet. Ball one strike pitch to Everth Cabrera from Liriano. A little bit high. Yeah, not quite finishing that uh, change up early on this game. Kind of leaving it up and out. Not getting that change up. Uh, typically, want to start it you know, around the thigh or knee and have it fade away from the right handed hitter. Sears, I'm sure, has an answer to why. I don't. 
can always just say, I guess, uh, it's flying open. There goes to Northfield. Throw down by Stewart, not in time. On a stolen base, his seventh. And now the Padres, with nobody out, have a runner in scoring position. And again, Liriano missing with the pitch. It's now three and one. Yeah. Big jump, first move. And guessed right. And not much of a chance for Chris Snyder. Cabrera offering, almost thinking maybe a hit and run. But uh, typically on a hit and run, you won't see that runner break first move. So maybe Cabrera just trying to protect. And a bump. And Cabrera's going to be in. Bunt base hit for Cabrera. And the Padres putting the pressure on early. Well, that's a perfecto. And you'll see. Um, Look how far Lariano falls off the mound here, and, and that's why a push bunt works. He's facing third base when this ball goes down, and so uh, has a long way to go. Even if Ike Davis were to come and get that ball, Lariano never would have beat Cabrera to the bag. That's just a, a well-executed bunt. With the Norfolk at third base and nobody out, and Carlos Quentin will now face Lariano. Another San Diego native. 278 hitter. Pops it up. Out goes Harrison. In comes Snyder. Harrison makes the catch. Denorfi is running. Here's the throw. And the Padres have a 1 0 lead. That's right fielder's ball. And that's what the only reason he went back to tag is because Harrison caught the ball. Harrison has his weight going away from home plate. He's catching it. He has no momentum. Uh, to make a strong throw if Snyder comes in and calls Harrison off then the Norfia goes nowhere It's not very often you see a sacrifice fly to the second baseman You shouldn't see one And that's typically when you're gonna see it you know when you're gonna Infielder backpedaling. A one nothing San Diego. And pitch to the cleanup man Chase Headley, switch hitting third baseman, is in for a strike. And uh, you, you could see Harrison waving his arm, saying he got it, but he's still, I'm, you know, you're, you're waiting to hear the outfielder. If the outfielder calls you off, you get out of the way. Pitch in the dirt to Headley, one ball, one strike. Base coach Ben Hoffman, a veteran, I'm sure you know that certainly was his decision. Taking a chance early in the game, worked out. Right. You struggle to score runs like the Padres do. Well, you have to take chances from time to time, even with your cleanup hitter on deck. And uh, that's just being the first out. I mean, just 19 RBIs for Chase Headley. And two hits. Headley not happy. So Liriano puts another man on. It's the second free pass. The first one by hit by pitch. Not a. Tremendous start here for the Bucks. And that um, misses by a bunch. Headley not real happy. Doesn't make much sense to the runner on first. To Put a guy on. I just think Lariano just held on to that ball a little too long. It's the fourth hit Padre this series. Charlie Morton hit three of them on Monday. And Tommy Medica, the batter, playing first base. This is his third stint with the big club. He's been back and forth from AAA this season. Made the opening day roster, too. He's got some miles under him from San Diego to El Paso. 
Two on, one out. Pitch inside to Medica. One ball, one strike. A lead off walk. That is one of the things that can come back to haunt. And it did as Denorfia has scored. Cabrera at second base with a bunt base hit. Carlos Quentin a sacrifice fly in an RBI. And Headley hit by the pitch. And Medica come back. Mariana goes to second. A turn. That's a right. And the Padres are getting another run. Cabrera comes in to score, and it's 2 0 San Diego. Right away, you're thinking, oh, it's not hit all that hard. Can you turn two? Harrison, he's got to jump as he's throwing that ball, so he doesn't have as much on it. The, the play closer than I thought. I didn't think uh, you know, we would have had a chance to turn two, but. Ball getting there about the same time as Medica, and I couldn't pick it. So an error on Harrison. And a 2 nothing Padre lead, bottom of the first. Cameron Mabin takes ball one. Maybe the center fielder didn't start in game one played last night. 304 hitter. And a strike to maybe. Maybe left Saturday's game. It's the White Sox with right calf tightness didn't play Sunday. They played Monday as a pinch hitter, came up with a base hit. And it's one and two. And there's a good change up. And two men out. Medica the runner at first, two runs in. And down on strikes goes Mabel. Two runs on one hit. It was a bunt. It was an error. And a man left. Two up. Top of the second inning. And the Bucks need some offense. And Ike Davis coming up, and he has seen Ian Kennedy before and has done quite well against Kennedy. We take a look back, July 28, 2012. Ike Davis, not one, not two, but three home runs off Ian Kennedy in his first three at bats. He became the first Mets left handed hitter with three home runs in a game since Daryl Strawberry in 1985. Mike has had success against Kennedy. The Pirates need to get those runs back. And 
Mike hits this one high in the air to center field. It's playable for Mabin. Mabin pulls it out of the bright blue sky. There's out number one. Four up and four down for the Pirates. They almost had another one. He just missed that one. That was loud. And uh, believe me, Ian Kennedy, he knows what the numbers are. Uh, what Ike has done to him. And boy, Ike didn't miss that by much. Well, Ike got him for another home run last year with the Mets. Jose Tabata playing left field today. Ball one to Jose. 281 hitter. Still looking for home run number one. Ten runs batted in. One and one to count. Jose more often than not lately coming off the bench. Pirates pinch hitters lead the majors in numbers of pinch hits. Follows this one back. And it's a one two count to Tabata. Uh, Kennedy's got to feel pretty good. He's pitching with a lead. And that hasn't happened a lot here at Petco Park. He's one in five at home this year. Or one in five at home all time at Petco Park, I should say, not just this year. Two and two to Jose. Seventh career start for Kennedy against the Pirates. And Tabata goes the other way for a base hit. First hit of the game for the Buckos. He likes to shoot the ball the other way. And after the bottom of the first inning where the pod scored two without getting anything out of the infield except for a little pop up that Harrison caught. So um, when Snyder comes in. First base coach, outfield instructor Rick Sofield, you know, talk to Travis and you know, and, I, and I'm sure the you know, the discussion maybe, hey, could you have got to that ball comfortably? Could you have gotten under it? I mean, you don't want a, a guy coming in from right field, and if he, if it's a struggle to catch the fly ball, you know, you let the the infielder take it. But if it's a if it's a fly ball, and I'm sure you know, Rick Sofield asked him, like, could you got to that? And, and and if so, then you know he's got to call him off, but. And Jay Hay, a bit of a tough spot as far as uh, trying to get something on that throw. And uh, he and Travis also talked in between innings. Top it off of first base, one out, 1 0 count to Pedro Alvarez. Pedro takes a strike and it's 1 and 1. Pedro's home run last night got out of here in the blink of an eye. It was a line drive to right. Might have still been going up when it hit the wall that it hit. Man, did that get out of here in a hurry. Inside to Pedro. It's two and one. Yeah, hard to tell which was more impressive. Neil Walker taking a curveball down and away oppo. Or Pedro's bullet. And got out in the blink of an eye. Two one. It's two and two. I asked Neil today. I said, "Did you think you had that one last night?" <laughs> he laughed and said, "No." Mm -hmm. So you were surprised then. Then it, it went out. He said, "Yeah, he didn't think that he got enough of it, but he said he had enough topspin on it. The ball just kept carrying." In this ballpark, certain ballparks you might know, but this one it's hard to tell. Fastball just missing. Kennedy wanted that one. A full count on Pedro. Ooh. That was a pretty good looking pitch. There he go. Oh, he called out. So Pedro is out, strikes out. That's strikeout number three for Kennedy. Pedro looking for the fastball on the 3 2 pitch, got the change up, and did he go? According to Joe West, he won enough.
Two men out, and Jordy Mercer, the batter. Throw to first base. Tom are getting back. Mercer had a home run in game one Monday night. And two for four last night. Pitch coming to Jordy. And he's down the middle for a strike. You mentioned Kennedy throws a lot of fastballs. Uh, Jordy, a good fastball hitter. And Kennedy also, you saw the change up will throw curveball, occasional cutter. Strike to the Pirates shortstop. Jordy started Monday night. His average was 199. Sitting at 226 today. And a raise of 27 points in just a couple of games. Throw back to first base. And top of the getting in. And then Rivera. Trying to keep. Things in line down there at first base, but Tom okay. Some catchers just like to throw more than others, and especially if when you get a fastball, the catcher gets a fastball to his backhand, gets some kind of turn towards first. It's just up. Again, Kennedy wanted it. Ian Kennedy, 29 years of age, born in Huntington Beach, California, makes his home in Scottsdale, Arizona now. Out of USC. Two and two against Pittsburgh in seven prior starts. Full count. Chris Stewart on deck. Tabata will run. Medica plays behind him. Two outs and a full count. Payoff pitch. And Jordy to right field. To Norfield over by the line. Make the catch. And the side is retired. One man left on base. It's a 2 nothing Padre lead.
Mets Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Malibu and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks. 2 nothing Padres to the bottom of the second we go. Let's take two for Francisco Liriano. Give up two runs on a bunt base hit. A walk, a hit batsman, and an error. Liriano looking for better fortune here in the second. Facing Rene Rivera, the seventh hitter. Padre catcher takes strike one. 244 for Rivera. Chase that one. That's what we've been hoping to see. Yeah. Some chases. Not on the fastball, but good late movement on that two seamer as well. I'm running away from Rivera. One and two. Outside. Two balls, two strikes. Next pitch for Liriano will be his 30th of the ball game. And Rivera now with a full count. They're going to have to start keeping a full count count because yeah. they're starting to pile up early again like they did on Monday. And he keeps missing with that change up arm side, uh, not quite. You know, the other day in LA, he, he was starting it on the outer half and it would run off the plate. He's just not able to get it there. Well, second straight inning, he has walked the leadoff man. Right now, Jace Peterson coming up and Ray Sirage and company hoping he can hit into a double play and clean up that walk. Peterson called up today by the Padres. Last night's starting pitcher Jesse Hahn was returned to double A San Antonio. Jace Peterson, 24 years of age, his second big league stint. He has 10 games of major league experience under his belt this year. He's swinging it well down in Triple A El Paso. And so a lot of managers like to get the guys up and right in the lineup, but a tough chore against the lefty. The only left hander in the lineup for the Padres. Peterson. Got his first major league hit this year on the very first pitch he saw against the national Steven Strasburg. Now he gets ahead one and two. First appearance in the big leagues as a second baseman. He started nine games at third. And appeared another time as a pinch hitter. I figure the Padres would want to have a right handed bat in there against Liriano, but Jed Jerko is uh, struggling. So Bud Black going with Peterson at second base today, even though he's a left-handed hitter. And Jerko having a tough time of it this year. He's hitting just 162. Folks tuned in from Morgantown, hoping to see him play today, but Jace Peterson in the lineup instead. 2-2 pitch. Got him. Call strike three. Peterson back to the dugout, and there is one out. Let's take a look at the Joe West strike zone. Right on that outside edge. Mariano gets his second strikeout of the day. Now Ian Kennedy will come up. 
Kennedy has three hits and 19 at bats. And strike. Kennedy signed through the end of this season. So who knows if he'll be here next year or even at the end of this year, or will he be elsewhere? In this day and age, uh, a guy like Kennedy, who's had some great years, uh, he finishes up strong and hit the free agent market. No telling how much you signed for. Goes back and that's a strike. And he's getting over six million this year. And that might be a lot for the Padres. Considering it wouldn't be that number next year. Could be three times that. And the one two coming. And Kennedy pulled the bat back, trying to swing it, fouled it off. And they got a good pitch uh, to pull right there, too, um, you know, with Pedro coming in. And when you pull back to swing, it, it, obviously a lot easier to pull a, an off speed pitch than it is the fastball. Fortunately, not able to center it up. And he bunts foul and strikes out. Two strikeouts in the inning. Three in the game now for Liriano. Two down runner at first. Fans don't forget. Fan Jam kicks off this Saturday, June 7th at 4.05. See the Bucks host the Brewers and stay after the game for the Goo Goo Dolls live in concert. See them perform all their hits like Iris and Slide. For tickets, go to pirates.com slash concerts. Goo Goo Dolls. Fan Jam coming up Saturday. A 4.05 start against the Brewers. Brewers in for three this weekend. Pirates off tomorrow. And then back at it Friday, Saturday, Sunday against Milwaukee. Then four with the Cubs right after that. Back to the top of the order and a strike to the Northfield, the foul ball. Where did April and May go, by the way? Man, it's, it's amazing how fast this season's going. In March, for that matter, the month in Florida. Went by quickly. A one pitch. In the north here. Takes low. Ball one, one and one. Lead off walk to Rivera. He's at first. Peterson struck out looking. Kennedy on the bunt. Fouling off. Strike three. So two out. One on. Stretching the pitch. Northfield takes low again, two and one. I have to assume that uh, spring is definitely behind us. Good weather, good big crowds back out of PNC. Nice little run of home games. Yeah. So make your plans if you haven't already. Come out to the ballpark this weekend and next week. See two divisional teams. Brewers who are in first place in the Central and the Cubs who are in last place. And ground ball to short. Mercer gets a good hop, tosses to Harrison, and they force out Rivera at second base. Head to the third in San Diego, 2 0 Padres.
Robbie and Smikowski, the uh, San Diego Padres lost a franchise icon in January with the passing of Jerry Coleman, who was a famous broadcaster here for the Padres. He passed away at the age of 89, but he's going to live on forever here outside the right field entrance at Petco Park in the form of a statue. The statue was erected after his passing, and uh, he was a very popular broadcaster from the, uh, for the Padres from 72 until last season, with the exception of 1980 when he was the manager for the Friars. He was a four, uh, the Ford Frick Award winner back in 2005, played nine seasons with the Yankees from 49 to 57. Rookie of the Year in 49, World Series MVP in 50, so an impressive playing career. But here's what's unique, Tim. He started his playing career uh, career in the minors in 42, but left to serve our country in the Marine Corps as a pilot and missed the next three seasons before resuming his career. He was very generous and classy to work with, and a cameraman here in San Diego, Eddie Barra, simply refers to him as Mr. C. So there's a guy that really left his mark on baseball here in Southern California. It was always great to come here and visit with Jerry. He was... Uh spectacular personalities around the game. Stewart flies to right and is one out. Fact, he's the only major league player to see active combat in two wars, World War II and the Korean War. He was a pilot. And at Balboa Park, there is a picture of Jerry Coleman in the Aerospace Museum and the the patch that you see on the player's arms, the JC and the star, his one of his signature lines is, you can hang a star on that, baby. Good plays. That is the patch that Padres will be wearing this year. That is in front of the writer's press. Mariano fouls this one back. Jerry used to have his own booth here. He would still do part of the Padres radio broadcast, maybe an inning or two a night. He had his own booth. And he was ready to go on. He'd go in the booth and come back and either watch the rest of the game or go home. <laughs> well, he deserved it. Yeah. And there we go. Down on strikes, two gone. Well, Ian Kennedy with another strikeout. That's four for him. Back to the top of the order. And Josh Harrison. Harrison playing second base today. Again, it's a day of rest for Neil Walker. Fent likes to get guys a day every now and then. Neil had started 58 straight. Felt that he was grinding a little bit and wanted to give him a day before a day off. So you can get about 48 hours off. It's uh, well deserved. Uh, you know, obviously there's a day off tomorrow, but like you know, the rigors of playing and, and the, the, the mental part of the game. Uh, you know, it's nice. It's kind of nice to just sit and relax in the dugout once in a while when you're out there every day. So Neil, and, and then you got to consider how many times he's been hit. Took one in the shin the other day. That can't feel good. Harrison to right center field and deep. Maven on the run. And this one's off the wall. And Jay Hay is going to turn second and head for third. Josh Harrison in the third base. Ball looked like it was misplayed off the wall by DeNorfia and Mabin. And that gave Harrison a chance to get to third. How about the opposite power Jay Hay's been showing? That one oppo at Dodger Stadium. And here in one of the bigger right center fields in all of baseball. Look at that extension. Head down. Middle of the wall out there. That's a long way. Oh man at third base and two men out. Chance for Snyder to get a run in. And Snyder hits one well to right field. And Orfia will catch up to this one. And Harrison is stranded. Two and a half at Petco Park, two nothing Padres.
Pirates Charities on Route Sports Auction is Tuesday when the Bucks take on the Cubs. Bid on special game-worn jerseys from that evening and purchase VIP bags filled with unique memorabilia like an original Pirates camel hat, autographed baseballs from a current Pirates player, and the World Series champion and much more. Proceeds benefit Pirates Charities, Wounded Warriors Project, Veterans Leadership Program, and Operation Troop Appreciation. 2 nothing, San Diego. And Everett Cabrera will lead off. He had a bunt base hit and scored a run in the first. And then see Liriano retire the leadoff man. He hasn't done that yet today. He's walked them in each of the first two innings. One one pitch. And a strike on the corner. Josh Harrison left at third base. His hit recorded as a triple, his third triple of the season. Snyder got it pretty good, but the North he hadn't played right and caught up to it. And a bounce it ashore. Good hop for Jordy. One out. Better for Lariano location wise. I'm sure if that uh, last pitch was a slider or the changeup, uh, there's a couple of innings. The changeup command wasn't quite there. Mariano now face Carlos Quentin. Quentin had a sacrifice fly and a run batted in in the first inning. Quentin got into a little bit of hot water two nights ago. Last inning when he didn't run out of ground ball. And Pedro Alvarez misplayed it. And essentially, by not running it out, Pedro had time to pick it up, throw on to first, and get him. So, in essence, Quentin took an error away from Alvarez. If Pedro could have kicked it over there. Still would have had plenty of time. He was in the ninth inning with one out on Monday. Probably not a coincidence that he was not in the starting lineup last night. Two one pitch. Yes, two and two. Here's the good change up. When he pitched Friday against the Dodgers, he really had the change up going. And had the late uh, movement. See that one stayed pretty straight. When his change up's real good, it moves away from the right-handed batter. Looked like it was there again. There had a little more movement. You know, it uh, obviously frustrated the Dodgers, but it almost looked like a screwball. And as it approached the plate, it moved a good foot, foot and a half away from that right handed bat. Full count. Sound like a broken record today. Full count. Yeah. Full count. Full count. And that last change up almost looked like a cut on him a little bit. Payoff pitch from Liriano. And he got him. Well, Quentin down on strikes. Two men out for the Padres in the bottom of the third. And Pirate fans, we want to see how you root for the Bucks. Show us the most unique ways you raise the Jolly Roger, the fun places you watch the games on Root Sports. Or how you display your pirate pride. Submit a picture via Twitter using the hashtag BucksFanPhoto. We'll show them the telecast. A good one a couple days ago of a guy skydiving here in San Diego with a pirate shirt on. That's going all out. Is that on your bucket list? What, skydiving? No. 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 I think airplanes are for another purpose to fly in, not to jump out of. Headley grounds out. And a one, two, three, third. On to the fourth, Petco Park. Two nothing Padres.
Show and earlier today on our Day Automotive, this day in Pirates history, Andrew McCutcheon in his big league debut. He took two words to describe that day when I asked him about that day. No sleep is what he said. He didn't sleep the night before. The game in AAA was rained out the previous night, and the Pirates had a day game, and he flew that morning but had a layover in Chicago and got the park. Uh, got to the ballpark with about 40 minutes to get ready to play a 12:30 game. He said everything was a blur. It didn't really set in until later that night that he had actually played a big league ball game. And as for mustering up enough energy to play that day, he told me, and I quote Andrew, I didn't need energy. This is the big leagues, end quote. What a ride it has been, Tim and John. From hot prospect to NL MVP, the journey, it started five years ago today. Well, the time can fly. And so can the baseball as this one is crushed to left field. Back it goes. It is gone. A home run for Andrew McCutcheon. And the Bucks on the board. It's two to one. Well, that crack. It's so loud. And he gets it good. And he got that one good. And it's June and Andrew McCutcheon heats up in June. Had a little bit of a home run drought. And Appears to be over. I expect to see quite a few more homers for Andrew. And the receiving line. <laughs> it's the yes movement. Now Ike Davis. Put the ball well to center field, but it was caught by Mabel his first time up. Let's watch this one again. Man, that's a changeup. Kind of tailed down and in. And the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl here. Gets to his front side. Hands lead the barrel, the bat to the ball, the head, perfect position, the high finish. Run number six for McCutcheon. It's the seventh home run given up by Kennedy this year. And the 2 1 to Davis. That's a great flight path. 2 2 pitch. And Ike is down on strikes. One out for the Pirates in the fourth. These guys are watching it as it's going. She's got the 22 sign. Made it for good reason today. Beaver Falls. Jose Tabata's one for one. He singled in the second inning. He was left at first. Strike two. Two eighty seven for Jose. Inside and it's one and one. Kennedy last year at the trading deadline was acquired by the Padres from the Diamondbacks. At Ten starts a season ago for his new club. First full season in San Diego. Hello to Uncle Buck. How many people have an Uncle Buck? I think a few, so yeah. say hi to all of them at once. We don't know which Uncle Bunch exactly. Yeah, but obviously, um, the nephew didn't appear to be there. One, two. Let's follow on. Speaking of uncles, you had a chance to visit with uh, the nephew while here. Yeah, huh? my nephew Kevin moved out here to San Diego. Big difference from upstate Vermont to San Diego. It's harder to get maple syrup here. 
This is a breaking ball. It just kind of comes out of his hand. And, and Tommy does a nice job pulling that bat down. 3-2 pitch has popped up. And Denorfia makes the catch. Two men out for the Pirates in the fourth. Fans follow every Pirates game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv, game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit Pirates.com today. Lots of Pirates fans with us here in sunny Southern California. Pedro Alvarez up. He struck out swinging in the second. He pops this one way up there. And waiting for it to come down is Cabrera. He makes the catch. And that will do it for the Pirates. But the Bucks get on the board. Kutch has gone deep twice in his last four games. Home run number six for Andrew McCutcheon and the Pirates are on the board. Three hits for the Buckos and Andrew McCutcheon, the anniversary of his major league call up with a home run. Liriano will now face Tommy Medica to lead off the Padre four. Pitch outside. Ball one, Medica fielder's choice in the first. And Liriano's pitch. 2 and 0. And when he has the good uh, change up going, he wouldn't hesitate to use it in a 2 0 count. Let's see where he wants to go with here. And he threw the change up 2 0 and tailed off the plate. Two one. Wasn't two one. That's a four pitch walk. It's third time in four innings, Liriano has walked the leadoff man. That's what I get for looking at the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody thought the first pitch was a strike. I Liriano did. did. And Joe West. Said it was off. Scoreboard got us all. So a walk, and now Cameron Maben up. He struck out swinging to end the first inning. And Maben takes a strike. And the 
That might be the best pitch he sees there. That first pitch fastball. And here comes the change up. One ball, one strike to Maven. From a pretty athletic family, his cousin is a member of the Minnesota Timberwolves and a first round pick out of the University of North Carolina, Rashad McCants. They've been from Arden, North Carolina. Two balls and a strike. Plate two and two. He really hasn't met expectations. Uh, he's still relatively young, but uh, highly touted prospect. Two two pitch. That's low. Well, originally with. The Detroit Tigers. That's where he made his big league debut. Then he went on to the Marlins. He was involved in a deal for Miguel Cabrera. He certainly has worked out for Cabrera. He's been here in San Diego since 2011. And they've been down on strikes for the second time today. Well, worked out for Detroit. It won't. Certainly. It works out for Cabrera wherever he is. It I doesn't guess matter. Right. I guess you're right. Hit <laughs> <laughs> anywhere he wants. Yeah, this did not work out for Cameron David right here. No. Um, no. Not the change up, the slider. The back foot slider. Maven selling out on a fastball. That was one out, Rene Rivera up. He walked the lead off the second inning. Yeah, and like I said, that Cabrera deal worked out very well for the Tiger. Yeah. Medica back to first base. Rivera at the plate. He's been around a while. Nice to see him with the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, continue to struggle with that changeup. Before Rivera was with the Twins, he was with the Mariners. 1 0 pitch. Foul off 1 and 1. These game times here in San Diego on these Wednesday getaway days, a little bit odd. Very odd. 3:40, 3:40 p.m. local time here in San Diego for a start time. Pretty sure it's the only team in the big leagues that does this. Yeah, swing and a miss, and Rivera with two strikes. I know that's great for the East Coast audience. Yeah. But at the same time. Padres hoping that folks getting out of work downtown will be able to complete the majority of their work day and then come over to the ballpark. Those guys are going to be here no matter what time. Yeah, school's out. Well, might be out. Just about. It's going to get out earlier here than in Pennsylvania. One two pitch. Count even two and two. Pitch count getting up there for Liriano. 74 pitches. On the bottom of the third, uh, bottom of the fourth round. Bottom of the third was his best inning. He retired the two, three, four hitters in order. Two, two to Rivera. That one's in play fair. Lariano whips it to first base. Davis has it. 
And Rivera is out. Number three on the put out. Medica safe at second base. On this week's Inside Pirates Baseball, several players step outside of their comfort zone to play some unfamiliar positions. Pirates coaches host the women's baseball clinic. Pitch for hope at PNC Park. And there's a lot to see on Inside Pirates Baseball. Presented by Allegheny Health Network. Tonight after post game on Route Sports. Talking about start times, and I knew I thought Arizona did something strange, and they do. They're where sure their night game started 6:40 local time. Colorado does that too. Pitches up and into Jace Peterson. Peterson struck out looking in the second inning. He is 0 for 1. Strikes, two outs. Attica at second base, and Liriano's pitch missed off the plate. One thing we've seen from Liriano, he's thrown more pitches than he has wanted to, for sure. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, you know, it's struggling with the arm side command. And so now trying to work away to the left handed batter, the only left handed batter in the Padres lineup. Uh, really got to get extended to get the ball out there. And pitching around Jace Peterson is now they're just going to put him on intentionally. We'll get to the pitcher, Ian Kennedy. Two on and two out. Two on. Padres lead it. Jordy Mercer will lead off the fifth for the Pirates. It'll be the bottom of the order. Mercer, Stewart, and Liriano. Francisco works on Ian Kennedy here. Struck out. Bunning the third strike foul. Kennedy hitting 150. By Stewart. Runners do not move. Peterson at first base and Medica down at second. Fastball down. Kenny, pretty good athlete. I mean, he can swing the bat a little bit. You know, one of those guys, some pitchers, you just go up there and throw strikes, you'll get them out. Kennedy, a little bit more of a threat. Two and one to Kennedy. And the fastball now in the dirt. Frankie. Well, it looks like Kennedy moves that front foot, kind of pulls it out before he swings. I don't know what pitchers are trying to do with a bat in their hand. You just give up. Well, sometimes I mean, if you can't hit a fastball, I mean, the hitters will open up that front foot, try to get the hips through a little early. And a full count. Runners will be off. They'll get a head start with this pitch. Murphy on deck. He's hoping to get up this inning, but Mariano trying to retire Kennedy. The three-two, and he walked it. Intention to walk the man in front of him to get to him, and he walks him. And the bases are loaded for the first time today. And it's not like he's just missing. I mean, this pitch way off the plate. 
And you look, the, you know, with the pitcher Kennedy batting, it really only one pitch ended up in the strike zone. And that was borderline. So, Luriano, including the intentional walk, five walks today, plus he's hit a man. Now the bases are loaded for the leadoff man, Chris Norfield. Well, this is obviously a big at bat, Ray Searage offering pointers. But uh, the Pirates obviously still in the game, just a one run game, but this is an important out. The Norfield walked and scored in the first and hit into a fielder's choice to end the inning in the second. He's 0 for 1. And swings at the first pitch, fouls it off, strike one. And maybe his best changeup of the day. Well, the last time that Liriano faced these Padres, he had a great outing. It was on August 19th. Here at Petco Park, he struck out 13 in seven scoreless innings. Well, obviously, we've talked about it for three days here. You know, the worst hitting team in baseball. And as you can see, uh, the one way to give up runs is to walk them. And Liriano throwing more balls than strikes. Missed again. Time to order up some action in the bullpen. That's what Clint Hurdle has just done, and the bullpen gets activated. Here's the 2 1 coming. And Denorfia takes low, 3 and 1. And Liriano just. Having all kinds of problems with the strike zone right now. And we could sit here and say maybe it's you know, all the change. It's not just the changeup. It's not just the slider. It's the fastball. All three pitches he's struggling with. He just doesn't know where it's going. Three one. It's now a three to one San Diego lead as Iriano has walked for this inning. The Padres have only one hit and three runs on the board. And um, hit one ball out of the infield, and that was caught by an infielder. Sacrifice fly. Two outs, base is still loaded. And here is Everett Cabrera. He has the only hit. It was a bunt. And a strike. Last time up for Cabrera, he grounded out to Jordy Mercer at short to lead off the one, two, three, third inning. One to the switch hitter Everett Cabrera. Out in front. And Mariana comes back. It's 0 and 2. Pretty good change up. Perfect location. Two from Liriano. In the dirt. One ball, two strikes. Thirty-three pitches this inning, and about a third of his game output at ninety-three. Sadler is up in the pen. Certainly, I would think this has to be his last inning of work if he can get through it. 
Two balls, two strikes. And when you're all over the place throwing a bunch of balls, you're not going to get the borderline pitches. Well, 2 2 to Everth Cabrera. Ground ball to the right side. Harrison's got it. Fires to first. And gets Cabrera by a step. One run, no hits. Three left. 3 1 Padres. Health Network injury update. Padres rotation may be getting a boost soon as Andrew Kashner may be close to coming off the DL. He's been on the DL since the start May 13th with elbow soreness. He threw a 65 pitch sim game here at Petco Park Monday and could start for the Padres as early as this weekend against the Nationals. I'm pretty happy after the sim game. So Andrew Kashner getting ready to make his return. He made his big league debut against the Pirates while with the Cubs. Searage talking to Francisco Liriano, not Frankie's day today. He's given up just one hit. You'd say, well, that's great, but he's walked in a run. Walked the pitcher with the bases loaded in two outs. It looked like maybe he said, uh, I can't stay back. So the Pirates trying to get the bats out and help Frankie. Kennedy's pitch to Mercer. Jordy takes low for a ball. And then the pitch. Jordy takes a strike that time. Nice ball at 91 from Kennedy. Jordy 0 for 1. He flied to right field his first time up. Now let's see if Kennedy can get a little generous. While the Bucks and base runners. Single, a triple, and a home run today. Single by Tabata, a triple by Harrison, and a home run by McCutcheon. I'm glad Jay Hay got the triple. I thought it was going to be a double and an error because the way it was played off the wall, it was misplayed. And Jay Hay kept on going. And he gets credit for his third triple of the season. And Mercer to the gap in left center field. It's down for a hit. Really a big turnaround first base. And the leadoff man aboard for the Pirates. This will bring up the time run. Getting to a good hitter's count against Kennedy. Have a pretty good idea what he's going to throw. 3 1 fastball. Jordy on it. Also 1 for 2. Good to see. Jordy's been doing with the bat this week. 
Well, Stewart fly to right in the third inning. He's 0 for 1. Seems like a lot of Stewart's hits go to right field. Nobody up in the Pirates bullpen. So it appears that uh, Lariano will stay in the game. And a strike call. Joaquin Benoit is up. He has yet to appear in this series. I think he's, he's the only pitcher that has him. I think he's just playing catch. No reason to get anybody up behind Kennedy right now. 63 pitches. And a two run lead. And he's struck out another man. Stewart down on strikes. Fastball, good location. Stewart trying to protect. Good late run. This looked like it started a bit off the plate. Mariano. Got a man over. That's foul. Bunting this year. That's not just with the Pirates. It's all around baseball. I guess if you could say, uh, you know, something's down, it's bunting. Just it's not getting done as well as it should be. Yep. Pretty good one there. First base to the time Liriano sacrifice bunt. There's Mercer into scoring position. Two down and Josh Harrison coming up. Let's see if we can get that one back. Does a good job of uh, getting it off the end of the bat. And that's a pretty good look. Mercer in scoring position, and you know, Jay Hage a chance to get him in. One for two today for Harrison. Good opposite field power headed to one of the deepest parts of the ballpark, if not the deepest part, in right center. 306 is average currently. How many positions has he played this week? Hmm. This one to the gap in left center field, and that one is getting down and bouncing off the wall. Mercer into score, and Jay Hay with a double. It's a 3 2 ball game. Harrison, another multi hit effort. Just staying hot. Just crushing the ball. Really uh, taking advantage of this opportunity. This time a curveball hung up there. And Maven went all the way over to right center field this at bat with uh, Jay Hay after that gapper in the third. Boy, is that a pretty looking swing? Allegheny Health Network Super Mo. Time run is in scoring position after Harrison doubles for the sixth time. He now has 13 runs batted in. And Snyder gave it a ride to right center in the third inning. The North caught up to it. Lead off single by Mercer. And the Pirates cash in. And it's a one run ball game. Fifth hit for the Pirates today. Strike two to Snyder. Balls and two strikes. Snyder awaits the pitch from Kennedy. He'll have to wait a little longer. And ball 
two strikes. I wonder if Kennedy just missed a spot too because it looked like Rivera was setting up outside. That ball came down and in. Yeah. So we can make a mistake here. Have Travis tie things up. You can't get on the same page. Shortstop Cabrera will come in and join the meeting. He wants to know if it's something about the signs. It's set. Two outs and a one two count on Travis Snyder Harrison at second. Kennedy delivers. Ball well, two up. Trying to get in Harrison. There's McCutcheon on deck. And a two two on the way. Breaking ball fouled off. So Harrison with multi hit games in five of his last seven. And then Snyder trying to get him in. Mm -hmm. He played second base today, played left field, right field, third base, four different positions this week. Yeah, you know, credit Clint Hurdle, too. A lot of times there's. You know, utility type guys will get hot and then they cool off. You. Put him back down. Jace Peterson up with the ground ball. Snyder is out, leaving Jay Hay at second. All right, let's get a run on two hits and they make it a one run ball game. Photo had to go a long way for this one across the pond to London. That's right. Man. Thanks for the photo showing their Pirates pride in London in front of Big Ben. We'll keep those submissions coming on Twitter using the hashtag Bucks fan photo. Showing his pride. What do you think of that mask, Rock? What is that? What, I mean, that, that catcher's mask. Anything like it. That's a catcher's mask? Yeah, that's a, you know, I don't think I'd want to wear that one in a game. But you know, mostly good. for kids. I don't know if it's supposed to be a, a hat like that. Carlos Quentin is swinging a miss, two and one. Down goes Quentin. Struck out last time up. He has driven in one of the runs for San Diego. A sacrifice fly. And Mariano missing three and one. 
Next pitch for Frank could be his 100th of the ball game. And a ground ball up the middle right there is Harrison. Clinton is out. A little more effort than that grounder. We saw the other night. Good five or six steps at least. About Eighty percent. Well, pinch hitter is up there now for San Diego, batting for Chase Headley, Alexa Amorista. Headley hit by a pitch and then grounded out to second base. Now Headley out of the ball game and Amorista in. Two for seven as a pinch hitter. This one fouled off. We had a pinch hit on Monday. Base hit in the fifth inning when he came in to hit in the pitcher spot and stayed in the ball game, played the outfield and shortstop before it was all done. So Bud Black making his first move. And down on strikes goes Amarista. He didn't realize it. Foul tipped it into the glove of Stewart. And now Bud Black comes out to talk to Joe West. Oh, a pleasant smile on. <laughs> I feel like Bud Black's going to get his way. Cowboy Joe. Get dirt first, you think? Almost looked like it, did it? Yeah. Bud might have a point. But certainly Liriano will take it, and there are two down. And Medica first ball swinging fouls it off. Very close. Good to have more than one camera, huh? A lot of different angles around this ballpark. Joe had it all the way. One one coming to Medica. Is it off? It's now one and two. Liriano, after walking four in the fourth, there's two outs and nobody on. Jared Hughes now warming for the Pirates. They're finding some command here in the fifth inning, Liriano. So, you know, he gets through this. We get the middle lineup due up in the top of the sixth. Who knows? Put up a couple. Liriano may be in line for a win. Funny game. Yeah. Frankie shaking off Stewart. Delivering 2 2. And it's 3 2 to Medica. And eight pitches for Liriano. Parks love to get him through this inning, and then that'd be it. Couldn't see him going on in the sixth, can you? I would doubt it, yeah, not with uh, where the pitch count is. Then again, I was a little surprised he came out here in the fifth. And down on strikes goes Medica. The two strikeouts in the inning. Second time he's retired to Padres in order today.
Well, since Andrew McCutcheon made his major league debut, 2009 on this date, he either wins places or shows. He is considered a thoroughbred in this sport. First, second, or third National League ranks in all those categories. That's pretty good. Very good. And he leads off here at the top of the six, 3 2 Padres. 385 foot home run to left field. Last time up. One and oh is the count. Kennedy's pitch. And for a strike. Alexander Marista remains in the ball game and plays third base for Chase Headley. And the cuts into right field and deep. Backpedaling is DeNorfi. And on the warning track, he makes the catch. Send you back to Pittsburgh right now. Paul Alexander is standing by with his game break. Thank you, Paul. Pirates trying to get a lead here. They are tied with the Reds in the standings right now, both six and a half behind the division leading Milwaukee Brewers. Brewers at home against Minnesota. Right into the shift. Second baseman Jace Peterson will throw out Davis quickly, two down. And Ike Davis is 0 for 3. Speaking of the Brewers, they come into PNC Park. This Friday for game one of a three game set, and it's a free shirt Friday. First 25,000 fans take home a Let's Go Bucks t shirt thanks to Point Park University. And don't miss the block party on Federal Street prior to the game featuring local live music. Plus, meet Pirates alum John Smiley at the Budweiser Bar. For tickets go to pirates.com slash free shirt Friday. I know you've met fans out there before Friday night games. Absolutely. What's uh, Smiley in for? Say again? What's Smiley in for? What can he expect when he goes out there? I don't think we've seen him out there yet. Good fun. Nothing but fun. Interacting. Well, Tabata takes ball two, two and oh. Two outs, base is empty in the Pirates' sixth. Away from putting the tying run aboard. Yeah. I don't think he'd want to walk uh, Jose Tabla in front of Pedro. Three and one. A little bit of off time before uh, the workshop gets busy. <laughs> And now Tomlin will take his place down to first base. Second time he's reached. And this will bring up Pedro Alvarez to face Kennedy. Let's make that one hurt. Kennedy, first walk of the day. Pedro has homered off of Kennedy once before. Top of the tying run. Two outs, top of the sixth. Three two Padres, and Kennedy out of the stretch delivers. And Pedro fouls it off. And he left that change up, up a little bit. Yeah, keep this down and away. And even though it's on the outside edge, you get about thigh to belt on Pedro. You can yank that out of the park. One. Coming into the game, Kennedy has limited left handers to a 204 average. And 
Now Pedro behind the count of ball and two strikes. You know, I think that's the reason why he's so good against lefties is uh, you know, he can sneak that fastball in there and it's got some life. It'll get you thinking about it and then pull the string. A real good changeup when he keeps it down. And yank that one too. Or got away with one. It was about uh, the location where Andrew went deep, threw him a changeup. It went down and in. Pedro waiting the one two pitch for me and Kennedy. Travel to offer first. And foul tip into the glove of Rivera for strike three. Pedro's 0 for 3. He struck out twice. Wants to leave a man. 3 2 Padres. League managers, but both also played in the Kansas City Royals farm system for Double Eight uh, Omaha. Although they were never teammates, they've main, maintained a very close personal relationship since the early 80s. And Hurdle told me they have a deep personal and professional respect for one another through all the conversations that they have had through the years. Now, when Clint was putting his staff together for the All Star game back in 2008, one of the first people he reached out to was Bud Black to be one of his coaches because of Bud's experience as a pitching coach before he became a manager. Now, they spent a lot of time on the phone that year discussing pitchers as he had a lot of trust in what Bud had to say and what his opinion was, Tim and John. But the fraternity of managers we know is a very close one, but some relationships like this one go a lot deeper than most. Yeah, there's a lot of relationships between managers that uh, go back a long way. Well, Clint's got a, a longer relationship with Bruce Bochy of the Giants. They were high school teammates on an American Legion team together. Well, they are managing against one another. There's Bud Black, the guy that has that Royals pedigree, like Hurdle does. Jared Hughes delivering to Cameron Mabin. Hughes is now in the game. Jared uh, has that sinker working, piling the strike zone, and getting the ground balls. Mabin, another swing and a miss. Struck out twice today. And and Hughes is out in front of him. And the one two. Two balls, two strikes. Nick Vincent warming up now for San Diego. That has roughed him up on Monday night. As tough a night it was for the Padre bullpen on Monday. Last night was the opposite. They were perfect. Yeah. Um, and that's been a strength for them all year. They've been very successful when they've taken the lead and gone into the late innings. Kind of like what we've seen the 
Almost all last year by that Pirates bullpen. Full count. Three and two to Cameron Maben. Has his sign and he's ready to go. Payoff pitch. Foul ball. Bullpen ERA is the leader of the Nationals. San Francisco next. San Diego pushed him to third after what the Pirates did to him on Monday night. And the Pirates right behind the Padres. Cubs fifth. Hughes delivering 3 2. And he's walked Maven. Four innings out of six. A leadoff walk has been issued to a Padre battle. Seventh free pass overall. Very fortunate this game. It's just a one run game. With all the free passes. Pirates outfielder still has yet to touch a game ball. Just one hit, a bunt base hit by Everett Cabrera in the first inning. Every other base runner has been aboard via a walk or a hit by pitch. Rivera, the catcher at the plate, throw goes to first and maybe back. Maven can run, but he hasn't run like he did in 2011 when he stole a career high 40 bases for the Padres. 2012, that was cut back to 26. He actually appeared in 10 more games in 2012 than he did in 2011. Stole far fewer bases. He was holding. Yeah, I think they were just holding there to see if uh, Maven maybe tip something, maybe take off early or flinch, or to maybe see if Rivera might start uh, the hands forward as if the bunt. And pretty good lead for Maven. Strike to Rivera. Sixth inning here in San Diego. Game three of this three game series. Pirates trying to come back and earn a sweep. They won the first two. And pitch out, nothing on. Maybe off for first. Nobody out. One ball, one strike to Rivera. And throw the first, and again, Maven diving back. Rivera received a walk today. And there goes Maven for second base and no throw for Stewart. Couldn't handle the pitch. Stolen base number two for Maven. And now the Padres with a runner in scoring position. And Stewart couldn't get a handle and um, not that he would have had much of a chance. It's a big league, big lead, a big jump. Obviously a straight steal as he never looks in. And um, Stewart catching that ball right out the end of his web. Couldn't get a handle. So now Rivera will try to move him at least a third. Jared in tight on. That's what you try to do. A guy, you, you think a guy's up there going to try to block the ball to the right side, try to move that runner over, so you try to make it more difficult. 
Running in on the hands. Three one pitch from Hughes to Rivera will wait inside move and Maben back to second base. Rivera played first base on Monday late in the game. It was his first career appearance there. He lit up with three put outs. Jared Hughes has come out and walked the first two. And it's incredible the number of base runners the Padres have had today with just one hit. Yeah. Uh, you cannot walk this many guys and expect to be successful. You have to let the bats take over and do something for you. But, man, too many free passes. Too generous today. They've sent um, 25 men to the plate. Nine of the 25 have put the ball in play. Here's Jace Peterson. Bunks it out in front of the plate. Hughes fields. Throws to first with Harrison covering in a two minute scoring position. Maybe down to third or there over to second. Sacrifice successful. Two to four goes to put out. And that'll take care of that for Ian Kennedy. So Kennedy will be out of the game. But Black will send up a pitcher, a uh, pinch hitter rather, Yonder Alonzo. And we'll see if uh, what Clint Hurdle wants to do. Um, obviously, we've had on our share of free passes, but you have first base open. As we look out there now, the infielders are all in. So if you want to set up the double play, they're going to walk him. So Alonzo will be walked. And the Padres will have the bases loaded again. Just the second time of the game they've had him loaded. Denorfia on deck will come up with one out and the base is full. So all three base runners will get free passes. And in the on deck circle now is Seth Smith. One of the better pinch hitters in recent years in baseball. And so far this year, the Padres best hitter. Out with a scouting report, he's going to discuss. He's, he's talking to Chris Stewart first to tell him what he wants to do, and sharing that information with Jared Hughes. The infielders out there just spectating. Seth Smith owns the highest slugging percentage in Major League history as a pinch hitter, with a minimum of 150 plate appearances, slugging 564. So owns a career 314 average as a pinch hitter. That's the best among all active players with at least 150 pinch hit plate appearances. Yeah, and since uh, Smith now playing regularly, it uh, weakens the bench. And obviously, if you have one of the best pinch hitters ever that's in the lineup, and so now a bit of a luxury, I guess, to give Smith a day off, keep him out of the lineup, but. You get to use him in this bases loaded one out situation. This is full and the pitch to Smith, a swinging strike. Third base, Cameron Mabin. And Rivera is at second and at first base, Yonder Alonzo. Let's 
Seth Smith at the plate. Hughes pitch in the only one. Bouncer right to Harrison. There's one. There's two. Beautiful. And Jared Hughes somehow gets out of it with a double play. We're headed to the seven. Pirates Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Angry Orchard Hard Cider, Branch Out, by Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better, and by Levin Furniture, proudly featuring solid wood American-made Amish furniture. For furniture that lasts, shop Levin. Let's go Bucks! Heading up the coast here in San Diego. Beautiful shot in the scenic city. Seth Smith remains in the game in right field. After hitting into the inning ending double play. That inning could have been huge for the Padres, but they got another zero up there. And Nick Vincent takes over for Ian Kennedy. 28th appearance at ERA jumped up quite a bit after his outing the other night against the Bucks, but uh, still pretty tough to hit. Just a 205 opponent's average. And one day Vincent through just a third of an inning gave up three earned runs on four hits and walked one didn't strike anybody out. Vincent to face Jordy Mercer Mercer got things going in the fifth when the Pirates produced a run. The double by Josh Harrison got Mercer around. That's one and to Jordy Jordy one for two. And Vincent uh, not a very hard thrower cuts his fastball has some run that they might get up to 90 91. Stays off the middle of the plate. And Jordy just got under it and pops it up to shallow center. Maybe. Able to make the catch and there's one gone for the Pirates in the seventh. Chris Stewart will be the batter now facing Vincent. Vincent out of Ramona, California. Tony Watson in the bullpen. And Stewart now facing Vincent with one out. The base is empty. Strike one. And the on deck circle for the Pirates is Starling Marte. Marte coming off the bench. Vincent, born in the same town that produced Tony Gwynn, Poway, California, which is to the east of here. Two 
two balls and a strike. Tony Gwynn, Mr. Padre. And he can hit. It was like softball for him. Still fires this one back. And it seems like the uh, play him off the line, he'll hit it down the line. Play him on the line, he'll hit it through the hole. Tony Gwynn. Uh, soft serves in the left. Bouncers up the middle. He wanted to drive one. Back leg it and hit one in the seats. Here comes the 2 2. And Stewart strikes out. So two gone for the Pirates in the seventh. Goes upstairs. 92 right on the outside edge. Vincent will now face Marte. Marte has been struggling lately. And he has been on the bench the last couple of games, at least to start. He did start Monday. And Monday did not get a hit. Walked. He was hit by a pitch and scored two runs, but he was 0 for 4 otherwise. The ball's hand to strike to Marte. The balls are two strikes. He went up after that one. How about that? Hmm. I wonder if Mr. Getton and Mr. Greedy know that they're missing a shoe each. <laughs> and Marte strikes out on three pitches. Two strikeouts for Vincent. It's stretch time in San Diego. 3 2 Padre. Here in San Diego, it's stretch time, and the Pirates are going to arrive in the wee hours of the morning after a cross country flight from San Diego. They get an off day tomorrow, but for manager Clint Hurdle, it's not really going to be an off day per se. He plans to share uh, some thoughts uh, with Franklin Regional High School at their graduation ceremony about what took place when 25 people were injured in a mass stabbing. He will talk about what happened, why it happened, and how we move on and uh, move forward from it. He has a story up his sleeve that he said he jotted down and he put together and he hopes will shed some light and encouragement on moving on and moving forward. He said with the way his voice projects Tim and John you guys probably know this he may not even need a microphone but he's really looking forward to being a part of their special day at Franklin Regional High School. So a nice uh, a nice thing by Clint Hurdle to go out and give some of his time in the off day a nice of Franklin Regional to invite Mr. Hurdle. Yep. Well, he's put a lot of thought into it. Worked hard on that so that's what he's going to do. 
Yep, said he's going to have somebody drive him because <laughs> he's going to be tired. Yeah, I'm sure. You see Watson's numbers. ERA down the one. Cabrera, a strike. He's the best. I mean, he, he is um, something. Uh, Clint Hurdle, in terms of speaking and um, how he can entertain an audience. I mean, Watson's been something as well. Doesn't matter, right? He's left. He's three above average pitches. He retired three of the four batters last night. One scoreless inning. He's retired 11 of the last 12 he's faced. 17 straight scoreless appearances for Tony Watson. And the way Tony is pissed, we hope that he makes a reservation for the Midsummer Classic. He has been pitching at an all star level. No doubt. You got to think. He's got a great shot to be one of the Pirates representatives. So unique uh, what Clint Hurdle has in his bullpen. You know, very rarely see the matchup lefty on left, uh, right on right. You know, whether it be Watson or, or Wilson, he'll bring him in for an entire inning to face righties and lefties. Obviously, Melanson and Grilly uh, don't match up. You just go and get out whoever's up there. Strike three, got him. Another strikeout for Tony Watson. Tony continues to record strikeouts. Let's see what the UPMC Sports Medicine Strike Zone says. A little help for Tony. He doesn't typically need it, but he'll take it. Cabrera. Not happy. Here's Carlos Quentin. Quentin struck out in the third inning. And that one barely makes it to the coach's box and foul ground. Strike one to Quentin. Crazy. This is another kind of crazy game here in San Diego. Um, Quentin, the 30th batter of the game. The first 29. Have gone a combined one for 16. There's been 11 base runs and still no balls to an outfield. Outfield has done a lot of standing today. They haven't made a single play. Not on a base hit. Nothing. And all they've done is play catch in between the innings. Joaquin Benoit warming up. For San Diego. And Clint fists this one foul back to the screen. Been kind of a leisurely day out there for Kutch. And Travis. Nothing in two to Quentin. Watson ready to deal. Here's his pitch. Just outside. Two pitch coming to Carlos Quentin. Popped him up. And Pedro calls off Stewart. And there are two down. Gives us a chance to take a look at the road ahead for the Pirates. Brought to you by Nissan. This long road trip comes to an end after today. The Bucks return home and get a well deserved day off tomorrow. Then the division leading Brewers will come into PNC Park Friday. And the Cubs come to town for four before the Bucks head to Miami for three. A brief three game road trip. Then it's a brief three game homestand against the Reds. We're going right back out, going to Chicago, to Tampa Bay after that. Interleague play down in the dome. So two down, and Amarista swings and misses. Amarista struck out in the fifth inning, coming in for Chase Headley halfway through the game.
That's strike two. It's pretty amazing. Right? Must be the back pocket rock. <laughs> Looks like it's been ironed. I know that guys take the batting gloves out of there and that sticks out, but I don't know. We're seeing a lot of it. I don't think it's a fashion statement. Like, again, I, that's all I think it is. is they pull their batting gloves out of their pocket and they don't tuck the pocket back in. Well, on purpose, they just don't think about it. I thought it was odd in Los Angeles from Empire asked Yasiel Puig to tuck his in. I haven't seen that before. So one two pitch coming. And an race to strikes out for the second time. Tony gets him in order to punch outs. Pirates to the bat rack for the eighth inning down a run. Charities, the Wounded Warriors Project, Veterans Leadership Program, and Operation Troop Appreciation during this year's Pirates Charities on Route Sports Auction. Tune in Tuesday to purchase VIP bags and bid on the Pirates game worn jerseys from that evening. Proceeds benefit Pirates Charities and local military support groups in their efforts to assist veterans and our returning troops. So look at the uniform they'll be wearing. Seth Smith moves over to left field. Quentin is out. And Venable over to right field. And the new pitcher is Joaquin Benoit. He has been the only pitcher out of the bullpen to not appear in this series yet. Benoit likes to take his time on the hill. Pretty good numbers. 161 batting average against. 175 ERA. And he's been scoreless, uh, worked scoreless ball in 22 of his 25 appearances. The top of the order up for the Bucks. They need a run. Padres with just one hit. It was a bunt base hit in the first inning by Everett Cabrera. So Benoit facing Josh Harrison. Harrison with two extra base hits today. Double and a triple takes ball one. We literally have, could, could have played today with no outfielders, and it would be the same result. You're right. Nothing has been hit out of the infield. The one ball that was hit out of the infield, Josh Harrison caught in short right field, turned into a sacrifice fly for Carlos Quentin in the first. But that's been it. That's it. Two zero to Harrison. <laughs> Two balls had a strike. Velocity. Josh can turn it around.
Ready for the 2 1 pitch now. And that's outside, 3 and 1. Montana's trying to be patient against Joaquin Benoit. See if he can earn himself a base here. Let's see if he gets a mistake here. Get that fastball down the middle. Turn on it. And drive another one in the gap or better. In the seats. Oh shit, look how far outside he's setting up on a 3 1 pitch. And Harrison to the corner in left field. That is a fair ball off the wall. Josh around first. He is into second with a leadoff double. And the Pirates are the tying man in scoring position. The third hit for Jay Hay today. His second double. Wow. Stay hot, Jay Hay. Unbelievable. Three extra base hits. And look where Rivera is. Look where it ends up. He made a mistake. Threw it in. And Jay Hay, he could turn around the velocity. Just stays fair. Easy double. Jay Hay, what do you say? See if we can get him home here. As the Pirates will send up Neil Walker to pinch hit. I said to Neil in the clubhouse today, I said, day off, huh? He said, yeah. I said, well, we'll see a pinch hitting late in the game. He started laughing. <laughs> here he is. Yeah. Let's see if Walker can come through. Walker hitting for Snyder. That would tell you that uh, Neil will be swinging. You know, I would think if um, Clint Hurdle wanted to play for a tie and bought Bunt Harrison up, he would have Travis do it. But uh, Neil will be looking to pull the ball. Good situational hitter. Walker pops it up. Mm. First ball swinging, pops it up to shallow center. Maybin coming in. Calls off Peterson and makes the catch. One out. And then Neil was trying to get on top to the right side. Didn't do it. Well, who's bringing the lumber? Andrew McCutcheon. Bring the lumber from Yellowwood. And earlier in the ball game in the fourth inning, a 385 foot shot to left field. His sixth home run of the year. And we'll see if McCutcheon can bring some more lumber here. The Pirates threatening in the eighth inning. Well, Benoit, the stretch, looking back at Harrison. Don't pay attention to Jay Hay. If Andrew gets anything to hit him, if they work around him or challenge him. Strike one to Andrew. And first pitch out over the plate. Andrew looking for the fastball, didn't get it. Out in front. 333 with runners in scoring position. On the season. Nothing and one to count to McCutcheon. Then was 0 1 pitch. Inside 1 and 1. Bud Black, I'm, I have to think that. Uh, scratching his head. How is this a one run ball game? So many free passes and opportunities the Padres have had, and now just one hit away from being tied up. Pounding yeah, ball over by the Pirate dugout. Soft, soft, soft. Andrew not being challenged, getting strikes. But not fastballs. Harrison off of second base. Joaquin Benoit getting the signs. And a one two pitch coming to Andrew McCutcheon. Mm. 
Maybe just showing it through the fastball well off the plate. In the hopes of uh, speeding Andrew up a bit. Let's see if he doubles up. My guess is he goes back to the off speed. Ben was 2 2. And McCutcheon in the air to right center. Jay Hay going back to tag. Maybe makes the catch. And Harrison will advance to third. And Andrews hit two balls deep to right. High, too high. Just under him. And that loud crack of the bat we've heard in his last two. At bats, but uh, just getting under it. You see the different trajectory. That pitch right down the middle at 96. You see the Allegheny Health Network super mo super mo just under it was Andrew. And just a fraction of an inch. With two men out. Tying runs at third for Ike Davis, who was hitless in three trips today. Big hole in the infield on the left side. With Alarista playing close to the bag with Harrison there and three men playing on the right. A lot of room for Ike. Yeah, ground ball to short and tie it up. That's all and two. Benoit getting ahead of Davis. Maybe he'll overthrow an off speed pitch bouncer. Ball two strikes now, Mike. Benoit has been a long time with the Texas Rangers. A brief stint. With Tampa Bay in the last three seasons with Detroit. It's his first season with San Diego. 1 2 to Davis. And if I can just paddle one to the opposite field, just tap one in the left. As you say, he just hit a routine grounder to short. There's yeah. nobody there. This game would be tied up. Well, they're um, working Ike in to make it more difficult to hit anything that way. Benoit feeling that uh, he can get on under the hands of Ike Davis. And Rivera comes out. Make sure they get the pitch right. With a single run on the fourth and a home run by McCutcheon. Jay Hayes had a big day at the plate, although he hasn't scored a run yet. Two doubles and a triple. He did drive in Jordy Mercer in the fifth inning, his 13th RBI. Padres with two runs in the first and one in the fourth. Here comes the one two. Davis to oh. the left side, right to Amarista. And the tying run is stranded. He just moved over there. 3 2, heading to the bottom of the eighth.
cannot be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Three two Padres with the lead. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And Josh Harrison moves from second base out to right field. Coming in off the bench for defense to play second base is Clint Barmas. And the new pitcher is Mark Melanson. Hoping to keep it a one run game. Steady as always, Mark Melanson. Two and a quarter, the ERA, 23 strikeouts, just five walks. Opponents not hitting much. So, not Sam Arista, who had been playing close to the bag, had moved. Oh, just a little bit to his left. Sliding over a couple of steps. Mike had the right idea. Not moving. I mean, but where he started that at bat, there's no way he catches that ball. Obviously, with two strikes, he played a little deeper. And then he moved off. Tommy Medica, the batter. Look at first base. Struck out last time up. He's behind nothing in two. I told you offensively, big day for Josh Harrison. He's the third pirate this year to get three extra base hits in a game. Andrew McCutcheon and Gabby Sanchez, the other two have done. Cuts just did it Sunday against the Dodgers. A home run and two doubles. Balls and two strikes to Tommy Medica. Well, the Pirates have to get some stuff done in the ninth if they want to. Little sweep here, but they've got to face him, Houston Street. 17 saves already for Street. Yeah, he's been pretty much uh, automatic. Pirates did get him one night when he was with the Rockies back at PNC Park. And Medica strikes out and then throw down to complete the strikeout. So one gone in the eighth. Pirates pitchers have struck out double digits. It's been pretty frequent lately. The tenth strikeout of the day for the Padres. So Maben at the plate. Go for two of the walk. Takes ball one from Mark. Even struck out in the first, struck out in the fourth. He walked in the sixth and was stranded at third. That was when Jerry Hughes had walked three in the inning, one intentionally. And Seth Smith, one of the best current day pinch hitters, came up and hit into an inning ending double play. That was a big sequence as far as keeping the Pirates in it. Two balls and a strike to Mabin. Looking at the standings today, man, it's pretty amazing uh, how many teams are just right in the thick of things. It's in both leagues, the AL and the NL. Looking, you know, the leaders have fairly comfortable leads in every division but one or every. Ground ball to short. Jordy throws out Mabin, two gone. And the only division that's tight is in the NL East, but. Yeah, I'm looking like in the National League, eight teams, not counting the division leaders, eight teams are within two games of one another. 
So it's pretty much everybody in it. In the AL, there's nine teams other than division leaders that are within two and a half games of one another. Everything tight except for the division leader. Hmm. Now, still fairly early, but approaching the 60 game mark, 100 to go, teams, a lot of teams. Most teams with legit opportunities to get into the postseason. Rene Rivera with a strike on him. Rivera's 0 for 1. He's walked twice. And ball hit to the outfield. How about this? An outfielder gets the play. First time today. And that ends it for the Padres in the eighth. Last wraps for the Bucks. They trail three to two. Field inside the clubhouse for game reaction from the team. Clint Hurdle and our Root Sports analyst. Pirates post game presented by Allegheny Health Network coming up after the game on Root Sports. We go to the top of the ninth inning. Be a tough duty for the Pirates here as they face Houston Street. The Padre closer. Padres with just one hit today, and it was a bunt base hit in the first inning. Crazy. Pirates have walked nine guys today. Liriano six, Hughes three. Two of them intentional. Now Houston Street taking over for Benoit. 17 and 17 save opportunities. And his 23 appearances still have been scored upon in two. And pretty automatic. Um, but we've gotten them before. And we can get them again. Street ready to go. Will face Jose Tabata first as Jose comes to the plate. We update you on our U scores, the Buck score promotion. Right now, $16 off the lower outfield and outfield box seats. The tickets will be available online at pirates.com a half hour after the completion of this game today. You can also pick them up tomorrow at the PNC Park box office. See if they can. Pick up one or two more before this one's over. Or Houston Street winds and delivers upstairs, and that's ball one. Again, only one hit for the Padres. Last time the Pirates allowed one hit in a game and lost was a while ago. You probably remember this, John. And Tabata in the air to center field, may have been drifting back. At the edge of the track, he makes the catch. One out. But it was July 25th, 1992 in Atlanta. David Justice had a solo home run off Danny Jackson. And they lost one nothing. But how about this one? August 7th, 2010, a walk-off home run off Houston Street in the 10th inning. As we go to the way back machine. 
Diego has gotten in before. See what he can do here with one out in the ninth. Pitch outside for a ball. And I'm sure that's what Street's thinking about. He's going to keep uh, everything away to Pedro. And he's either going to be right on the edge. Or he plans to be right on that outside edge or off the plate away. And the pitch in for a strike. It's one and one. Hit to center field by Pedro. And the time run aboard with one out. Well, we just got some sad news from the world of baseball, John. Long time uh, baseball man, Home manager, player, Don Zimmer has passed away at the age of 83. Mm. Mm. Sad news. Been around a long time. Had spent time one way or another with 14 different major league clubs. Took the Red Sox to the World Series against the Big Red Machine in 1975. Reds would win it. Let's see if the Pirates can win this one. Another runner on that tying run, Pedro. To Mercer, one ball, one strike. And uh, saw how Street pitched to Pedro. And I guess uh, do the same here with Jordy Mercer. Try not to miss with anything on the plate. Certainly nothing middle in. Try to keep everything down and away. And see. And that pitch just a tight little slider. And you can't try to pull him. Now you just see what you could do. Try to put it in play. And you slap one inside that hole. Popped up. Catcher Rivera. Two down. Now it's down to their final out. Pirates have not swept the series this year. They're down to their final out against Houston Street. And a pinch hitter will come up for the Bucks. Will be catcher Russell Martin. And the last bullet in the gun, perhaps. Martin is 0 for 5 in his career against Houston Street. First time for everything, though. Let's go to the first base. Well, Pirates didn't sweep an awful lot last year either, but it was two out of three, two out of three, three out of four. They want to win series. Pirates have already won the series. They were able to get a sweep somehow. That's all one on Martin. I don't think he wanted to catch that much plate. That might be the best pitch Mar uh, Russell Martin sees. Streets 0 1. Outside, one ball, one strike. With one bunt base hit. Amazing. Are one strike away from winning this game. One bunt base hit today. This Martin can keep this game going. 
This will be a head scratcher. Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch from Street. And Martin pulls it foul. And we got away with another one there. And I thought Russell uh, may only see one decent pitch. That was the first pitch fastball of Street. Uh, hangs a slider. And Martin was out in front. Lucky to get away with that one. Being pinch hit four by Martin. Two down in the ninth. Pedro at first. He's the tying run. Streets 2 2. Did he go? No. Oh. Rob Drake rings him up to end the game. An absolute head scratcher here this afternoon. The Padres don't hit and they win. A bunt base hit. And uh, well, their pitching staff, they've been strong. 